Welcome back to the show. Compromise can be difficult, but the Dixons do not allow this to get in their way. Moving in together for the first time, it wasn't easy. Reason being, because now you're in each other's space. So it's not about you going to his house or him coming to your house, it's about you being together. So you start to, okay, you know the dirty habits, they take off the, 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 the socks and put it in the shoes and leave it and don't put it in the, in the wash. Those look at stuff, <laughs> right? It starts to get to you, okay, you know my face every day. You need to come out of my face now, right? Stuff like that. But after a while, I get used to each other. Yeah, it was challenging at first, as you said. Certain things, you know, you'll have to brush up on certain things. But after a while, it just becomes natural and things like that. So, it wasn't hard. One thing I don't like about her, she don't like to ask us stuff that she wants. You see, like for instance, she has some, uh, a thing on her foot, a little corn. Sometimes she wants me to pick it or to clean her ears or something like that or her navel. She will say to me like, uh, oh, but like she will be cooking or so. Then after she finish, she don't say, I want you to do it or something like that. She don't, or if she, even if she wants some money to do something, she don't like to have, she want me to like think for her and just give it to her and stuff like that. Typical females. Mm -hmm. But I don't like that. I like her to ask for what she wants. Because I'm not reading my mind. Because <laughs> <laughs> sometimes, all right, listen, if somebody asks you for clean them ears, you know, expect to go back to him and him supposed to ask you when you're ready. Because I mean, I tell him why you do it. I do something, I sit down there, I sit down there, I expect you to say, you ready now? I don't expect me to tell you again, okay, do it. We just want to live comfortable, we want to retire at like 45 and we stop work and just enjoy our life, go around with the kids, just go up on vacation, just have a whole heap of fun as husband and wife, plan anniversary um, getaways every year and just get with it and just explore, just, get, just fall in love over, 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 over again. You and I was make a pact We must bring salvation back Where there is love I'll be there I reach out my hands to you I have faith in all we do Just call my name And I'll be there <laughs> <laughs> You have to first be friends before your marriage can work because marriage is not about the ring It's not only about getting the ring, it's far beyond the ring you have to offer some form of emotional support, your time, your energy, everything into your relationship because think about it, you're in a relationship, you can't communicate with your partner. If anything happens, bad or good, whatever, you're supposed to can call and say, Dino, you know, say this happened, whatever, whatever. And him say, eh, and you know, we know how to work out situations. So you have to first be friends before the marriage can even work. For us, we put it this way. Once you say your vows, I don't have time to be thinking about another person or what can happen or what will happen. What I do is I, commit, I, I stay committed to my vows, so I stay true to myself and I stay true to my relationship. So in that event, I don't have any time to, to think about lies or think about, okay, there's somebody else, okay, this is going on, okay, I don't, we don't do that. We, 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 you give each other space. We don't search our phones or one another phones. We, we stay open. I can't say, oh, take my phone, do this for me, do this. You understand we don't do that because there's no need to be going around looking for something you didn't put down, right? Because those things are the stuff that actually breaks up relationship when you don't trust your partner. You have to trust your partner. You have to trust them. Sometimes he leaves for a month, go on detachment, and I can't be there thinking about, oh, I wonder what, I wonder. No, you have to trust them. If it's work, it's work. If you're going out with your friends, it's your friends. They don't think about, okay, it's not no friend or 
those things they can be very nagging and they can tear you apart easily not, not you're going to ignore it because if there's a change or if there's any sign okay it's a something change then you go find out what's going on but apart from that you don't have any re reason to not trust your partner if you don't trust them then it won't work you have to trust I keep grounded because of the Bible. I read, I read my Bible and thing, and I always read books about marriage and things. So that kind of keep me steady and focused. But I trust her to one more than one hundred percent. Since we have been married, we really haven't had any challenges per se. No, the only problem I have because we have changed in terms of work. Because no, based on his job, he's away for like a month. And back then, from 2010 until now, we have never been apart. Only time I've ever been away from him was two weeks when I went away once without him. That's the only time. But apart, like now, we, we have been, we, we are away like for six, one month. Probably sometime we can reach to six weeks and so, so. That's the most challenging part because now I'm alone. I come home by myself in the evenings. I'm there alone, cook, eat alone. So like that. It get me depressed most of the time. Sometimes even my co-worker asks me, what is wrong with you? Fatted because they call me fatted and things like that. And I say, no, it's because I'm away from home and I'm not used to this and thing. But I'm learning now to, I'm understanding no and thing, understanding the situation because I have to do it, uh, do it or go somewhere else or something like that. So I'm coping with it. I try to make it home every weekend, but if I can make, but you know, even one week when I come home, I'm just so excited. Come like I miss her for like a year or something like that. So I have to play like catch up and thing, you know. Getting married to you, Krista J, is like a dream come true. You have, you have really been a supportive husband to me. You have pushed me to do my best all the time and you always tell me that only my best is good enough which is good even though sometimes you annoy me when you don't do the thing I want you to do right away but that's okay I, I, I'm getting used to it I really want us to be an example to young people out there who are fighting with their marriages who are fighting to be in, and to stay in love we want them to know that you have to just work and you have to pray to God and you have to ask God, ask God to help you and to guide you and to protect you. I want to spend the rest of my life with you. I want to grow old with you. I want to go to the park and walk old and pick out gray hair and pick out hair from face <laughs> and all of that. Just to be just one happy family and to stay in the church and to always trust God and to always stay in love. I just want you to know that I love you and you are the best thing that ever happened to me. You bring out the best in me. I want us to spend the rest of our life together and I promise you that I'll continue to love you and help you to face all the challenges and face them dead on. We are one year down and forever to go. Yeah. We want to thank you for joining us for the Dixon story. We hope their story inspired you to enjoy your relationship. Join us next week for another on The Alric Show. Take care. The Alric Show.